everybody, and welcome back to the Total Percussion Blog for lesson number five, where we're going to talk about some accessories in the orchestral percussion section. Um, I'm going to deal with three specifically to start off with, and uh, I might cover more in another lesson series. I might continue this um, and discuss some others if you guys want. The first one I'm going to talk about um, are finger symbols. And then I'm going to discuss some triangle technique and uh, some things that work for me on triangle. And then I'm also going to end off with uh, some castanet technique and uh, talk about some different types of castanets, uh, different techniques to play them, and so on and so forth. And so I'm going to start with uh, the finger symbols. And uh, it's very interesting to see different people play these different ways. Um, and the way that works for me is I hold them with my thumb and my index finger right on the bell. And then uh, we are, uh, as percussionists, we tend to avoid playing them this way. Um, that's not quite the sound that uh, usually is desired when someone writes for finger symbols. You can also see it written as antique symbols, um, uh, tiny symbols. I've, I've seen a, a couple different ways uh, that people have written it. Uh, the way that I generally tend to play uh, antique symbols is that I strike them against one another. Um, I'm going to use this direction. Um, to give a soft, um, sort of full of overtone, colorful sound, and it'll sound something like this. Basically just dropping one symbol into the other, I'm hitting um, on the rim, or the edge of that symbol. I'm sort of just letting them hit. Um, and then the, another way that I tend to play finger symbols, if I need something to be a little more precise, uh, maybe less overtone and more uh, maybe sort of louder, um, as I tend to play on the edge of each symbol. Gives me a more direct sound, um, and I feel like I'm a little more in control of my dynamic. I can also play softer. Um, and finger symbols really max out at a certain dynamic. You're not really going to get them much louder. Um, so I would recommend be very aware of your dynamic range. Um, the one final thing I'm going to discuss with finger symbols um, is that you can give vibrato. You can warm up the sound just a little bit, and that's caused by shaking them after you hit them. It sounds something like this. You can do different degrees of shake to give different amounts of vibrato. opposed to just straight sound. And you can also do it the other way as well. And then finally, um, that second way is, is probably not preferred by me, and you could probably tell why, because I missed the first one. Um, I find that that one isn't quite as accurate um, because there's a little room for margin in this motion as you tend to move both or one because you're also just trying to glance. Um, if I play it the other way, I have an exact playing spot that I'm shooting for, an exact point of contact. Um, and I feel like I can be a little more precise and consistent at this technique. Okay, so there's finger symbols um, in a quick little nutshell. Let's stick with the metals, and I'm going to talk about triangle next. Um, I'm going to start with a, a six-inch A bowl here, um, and I like to use sort of a medium-sized triangle for really any situation. It's sort of a, a default, sort of my old reliable triangle, if you will, um, and that usually tends to be this this six-inch Allen A bowl, um, or maybe the six-inch Grover. And then I also try to use one. Um, specific triangle beater um, for everything that I do. And then that allows me to be a little more uh, consistent. Um, if I can get all dynamics from this one triangle beater, I don't have to switch to play softer or louder. Um, I can get everything from this one triangle beater. And so um, I have, I'm right handed, the open end of the triangle to my left. And then I play in the, the bottom portion of the triangle. Now I, I have an angle. Um, maybe about a 45 degree angle um, to the ground and the triangle and not directly perpendicular 
um, and I'm not parallel with it either. Um, I, I want to have a nice good angle of projection. Um, and so I like to hold the triangle up so I can see the conductor um, and, and whoever is uh, directing the ensemble and the sound will project towards them. And so I will, I will face you and, and just play some triangle sounds. Um, and I'm looking for a consistent sound in each hit. Um, one thing that you can really tell easily if you spend any time with a triangle is how different each sound can be if you're not careful. So um, just, just sort of think about that and listen to me as I play, um, and, and I'm going to try to get each sound to sound exactly like the first one, no matter what the dynamic range. Mm, that one was different. Okay, um, I hold the triangle, I place, uh, place my hands in a C, and then the triangle clip sits on top of that, and then that allows my bottom three fingers um, to muffle the triangle and uh, control the sound that way. And so here's some examples of some muffling. And then also, uh, we need to be able to roll on the triangle as well. And uh, the easiest way for me to roll and keep it consistent is to pick the corner opposite of the open end and roll in that corner. And if I need to get softer, I get closer to the corner. If I get louder, I move towards the open end of the triangle. So it might sound something like this. Okay, um, and then uh, I'm also going to play a little bit on each triangle. Um, so that was the, the six inch Abel, um, and this is going to be the uh, six inch Grover triangle. And notice the difference in sound. It's the same size technically, but totally different design. Um, and so it's going to sound very different. Okay, so different complex of overtones, um, just a totally different feel out of a triangle. Um, then I'm going to go up to the 9-inch, uh, I believe it's a 9-inch, yeah, 9-inch Grover. Um, and so this is a bigger triangle, um, and it's going to have a very, probably a darker sound. So um, the age-old saying of bigger equals louder is really true in this case. Um, the bigger the triangle, the lot louder um, and more overtones that you're going to get just because of the nature of the instrument. Um, then one more final thing I'm going to discuss uh, with triangle are the different playing positions um, in order to get some different sounds. If I want to keep uh, the overtones and, and I want to have a good shimmer, which is usually what um, a typical triangle hit is going to want to encompass, um, I'm going to stay towards the bottom of that triangle. And then if I want to dry that sound up, get rid of some of those overtones, I'm going to play exactly opposite the open end. It's going to act as a nodal point on the triangle. So notice the difference between the overtones. And then the dry sound, no overtones. Okay. Um, so yeah, take that and use that as you will. Um, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback if you have any uh, differences in techniques or anything like that. And I'm going to close out with talking about um, some castanet work. 
Um, and so I'm going to start with these uh, Frank Epstein castanets. Um, and these are made to be played on your leg, like traditional castanets would be, besides the ones that were handheld. Um, and so I'm going to play these uh, similar to how I would tambourine, knee, and fist. Um, and I'm going to play these just like I would drumsticks and uh, try to treat them rudimentally. Um, one thing about castanets, um, typically if you have sort of like longer notes, you play them as flams just because that's how traditionally they would be played in the hands. You would like to play hands together. So if at all possible, um, I recommend when playing castanets, even though it's not written, playing flams on the longer notes, uh, especially to start faster rhythms. Okay, so something like that. Um, and so then there's a different type of castanet that Black Swamp makes, and I've got them in a machine right now. Um, and so if you, if you take them out of the machine, um, they're a little different. They're made to be played up in front of you. They have a, a, a curved edge that allows one castanet half to be stationary while the other one hits it. So these are much louder. Um, they project really, really well. Um, and it's just a different type of of uh, castanet, a lot of uh, new makers are going this route. Um, and then they also have a dial on them that you can control the tension in the string. Uh, the looser they are, the more floppy, the more um, traditional the sound can be. As you, as you tighten it up, you can be more precise. Um, and if you place them back in the machine that holds them in place, okay, um, you're able to play both castanets at the same time. Okay, but that sound sounded totally different from the ones that were up, um, even with it being the same castanet. Uh, that being because they're facing you, the, the sound is absorbed into your body and shot down to the floor instead of going up and out um, of the instrument. I recommend putting them in the machine or using a, a, a standard machine castanet as a last resort, just because of the sound quality difference. Um, the only time that I would really ever use this is if uh, it was a time constraint in getting to the instrument and then getting away from it. If I didn't have time to physically pick it up, throw my leg up and play, or just throw them up and play, um, I would put them mounted on a machine that way I could play them and go do something else. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums up uh, the, the, the orchestral percussion toys that I want to discuss today. Um, I would love to hear you guys' feedback if you have um, anything to say about anything that I have said, um, and you can leave the comments at uh, the blog page at totalpercussionblog.blogspot.com, and then feel free to send me emails at totalpercussionblog at gmail.com, and um, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. If you have any um, suggestions of some lessons that you might want to uh, hear, anything you want me to discuss, um, I would love to hear that too. And so uh, thanks a lot, and uh, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.